CSOs under the ages of Civil Society and Workers Dialogue Forum have kicked against NLC and TUC's planned strike scheduled for 3rd of October. They have also warned that they would organize anti-NLC strike on the same day of the planned strike. This will be our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. The price of diesel is still rising and has been projected to go as high as 1,500 naira a litre. And just like petrol, diesel prices are a critical source of pain for the economy because they affect the cost of product, practically every product. This is our second hot topic on the breakfast this morning. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies to look at the headlines that made it there. Our analysts will be joining us. Hello and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe. It is our Friday Flex edition, and we'll go straight to our top trending. The first, the Minister of the Nigerian Federal Capital Territory, the FCT, Nyisamwiki, has sacked some heads of parasitals, agencies, and government companies of the Federal Capital Territory Administration with immediate effect. This was made known in a statement signed by the Director of Press from the Office of the Minister, Mr. Anthony Ogunle and made available to journalists in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. Those affected include Group MD CEO, Abuja Investment Company Limited, CEO MD, Abuja Markets Management Limited, MD CEO, Abuja Urban Mass Transport Company, CEO MD, Abuja Property Development Company, CEO MD, Abuja Technology Village Free Trade Zone Company, and CEO MD Abuja Film Village International. Others are CEO MD Parnas AICL Equipment Listing Company Limited, MD Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, MD Abuja Enterprise Agency, and GM FCT Water Board. Also affected are DG FCT Emergency Management Agency, Executive Secretary, FCT Primary Healthcare Board, Director General, Hospital Management Board. Director, Abuja Environmental Protection Board. Director, FCT Scholarship Board. Director, FCT Christian Pilgrims Welfare Board. Director, Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, and others. The affected persons were urged to hand over the affairs of their offices to the most senior officers in rank. The statement said that appointments into the offices will be made in due course. That's what you call a very wide sweep. All right, let's move to the next one. Some traditional religion worshippers and revolutionary activists on Thursday morning protested in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capitol, to demand the immediate release of one of their members, Debola Abdulaziz, also known as Tani Olong. In videos posted online, protesters were seen with different placards urging the Oyo State government under the leadership of Governor Shea Markinde to intervene on the matter. Tanya Long is currently in detention at Lauren Prison, Quara State, after a chief magistrate court in Quara State refused the bail application filed by Adebola Abdulaziz in Anishese traditional religion practitioner and activist, also known as Tani Olohu. On Monday morning, an upper area court in Lauren granted bail to Tani in a separate suit. The court gave the ruling after listening to the arguments of all parties on the merit or otherwise of the application filed by the applicant, ruling that bail be granted to Tani on condition that he gets two short T's who would provide five million naira each and proof of landed properties in Loring, the Quara State capital. While reacting to the ruling of the court, Ade Damola Solesi, one of Tani's lawyers, said the judgment will not grant Tani 
total freedom to leave detention because of the subsisting ruling of the magistrate court. The development had generated a lot of reactions from concerned institutions and bodies who described the condition or well, continual detention of Tani as deliberate. We have a video to show you. Good. Oh, that's a brief video there. Well, the third top trending, there was apprehension at the Works Ministry on Thursday as protesting civil servants grounded activities after the minister, Dave Omahi, locked out over 300 staff and directors who resumed work late. The public servants expressing their displeasure also demanded an apology from the minister. Earlier, the minister upon resumption at 9.30 a.m. was said to have prevented workers who came to work late from gaining access to the ministry for over four hours. However, after the gate was opened, the workers comprising both housing and works ministry refused to enter the ministry and resorted to an impromptu protest and barricaded the entrance gate. But well, what do you think about this? Um, there have been different reactions. Some are hailing the minister, saying, yes, way to go. It's about time to bring sanity and discipline. And some are saying, well, he should have gone about it in a different way. What do you think? Let us know. Don't forget, you can continue this conversation on our social media platforms, on YouTube, Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter. All right, it's time we take a break. We'll come back with Of The Press. Do stay with us.